Hello and welcome back to Nerd News Today. I'm Matthew, and in this episode we are taking a look at a brand new entry in the Diamond Select Marvel Select PVC Gallery Diorama series. And this time around, it's a new rendition of an old style of a character that we all love, and that would be Iron Man. But this particular version of Iron Man to me is actually one that is pretty nostalgic because this is kind of the initial design of Iron Man when I was growing up. When I was a little itty bitty Matthew long before Nerd News Today existed, somehow smaller than I am now, I remember reading Marvel Comics, getting my very first bunch of comics ever, and it was in fact the series that was done by John Romita Jr. And it was this very kind of blocky artwork which, you know, has become one of my favorite artworks to this day, and he is one of my favorite artists in fact to this day as well. It left a very big impression on me and I always liked that design, and so now here we have now Diamond Select's version of this in three dimensions, and this is pretty exciting for me to have. We're going to get a closer look at this in one second, but first let's just talk about this packaging because that's what we always do. And as always, the packaging has that classic Diamond Select 3 window design. You've got windows on the left and the right as well as on the front, so you can really see this from all angles and get a great glimpse into what's inside this box. And of course, as always, this being Diamond Select, you have that handy dandy Diamond Select sunroof because Iron Man needs a tan. The back of the box shows what the statue is going to look like out of the packaging and also has a really, really brief little introduction about who Iron Man is, who I think by now we all pretty much know who he is. But it's always kind of fun seeing Diamond Select challenge themselves to make a version of a bio that they've already written like 10 times, I'm sure, and find a way to make it actually interesting and different. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty good bio though. I actually do like it very much. And it also lets us know who made this piece. And this was designed by Nelson X Asensio and sculpted by John St. John. So that's enough about the packaging because I sure don't care about it beyond this point here. So let's go ahead and get this Iron Man out of the box and take a better look at him from all angles. All right, and here is our Iron Man now out of the box. And this is really cool looking piece, you guys. You know, it wasn't too long ago that we looked at another Iron Man statue, in fact, and I really enjoyed that one. And I'm getting kind of the same vibes. Uh, and those vibes are that this is a really cool piece. I mean, it's really hard to make a bad Iron Man statue. I, I really challenge anybody to try and go ahead and do that. But really, this one, especially for me, it's like so nostalgic because, you know, I was talking about at the start of this video how it had that kind of like John Romita Jr. look to it. And to me, like, that is my Iron Man. Like, that's the one I grew up with as a kid. That's my original Iron Man. I think a lot of us are attached to that kind of like 90s animated version of him as well, like the modular style Iron Man armor. And that was really cool. But. When I think Iron Man, really, for me, it is that John Romita Jr. work. And this really captures all of those John Romita Jr. elements that I personally love so much. And I know a lot of folks might not be fans of the way he works, might not be fans of the way he draws, but I've always enjoyed it. I've always admired it. So, yeah, let's talk about that right now and see how it translates into this three-dimensional statue form here. So the first question, of course, we always ask is, does this look like Iron Man? And, yeah, no, it totally looks like Iron Man here. I mean, there's no real doubts about that. But what I kind of like about this is the fact that he almost has some like facial expressions on that. I mean, look at his helmet here. He actually has like a furrowed brow kind of. That's kind of fun. I mean, that, that's just how it looks in the armor, but it really has a lot of expressiveness to it. The way the eyes are shaped, the way the mouth is shaped, uh, the kind of the spacing around it too, and the way the cheekbones look as well. Again, that's just the mold of the helmet. But all these different elements that you're seeing right here, they really add to an expressive quality to what is essentially just supposed to be a piece of metal. So that's really cool. I like that a lot. I like how much emotion there really feels to be in this piece right now, because really it's just a mask. So the emotion is what you put, and when I say you, you the person who owns the statue, you the person reading the comic at home, it's the emotion that you put onto the piece. And you can definitely channel some kind of emotion onto it. It definitely feels like you know, a lot going on there. So that's really cool. Now, as for the armor, you know, again, this is the John Romita Jr. style artwork. So the armor is a lot, uh, I don't want to say simplistic, but the way he drew things, it's very streamlined, very chunky, very kind of clunky in some ways too. That kind of armor, and very tubular. So that's kind of Romita Jr. style, is this kind of tubular look. And you can see that especially with the boots. Uh, and I really feel like you get that a lot too when you take a look at the gauntlets. There's a kind of like, you know, just real bold lines. That's what, when you think about John Romita Jr., that's what you think about. That's what you envision is all these big, bold shapes, big lines, always just, you know, very much all about the line work. And you really get that here. I mean, you absolutely do get that here. I mean, I think that's one of the things I actually liked about this piece when I was a kid was just the way that it looked and the way that it was so kind of thick and big and, you know, very expressive. Again, just for something that is so thick and big, it's very expressive. And the expressiveness also came the way that he drew things because you can see it right here from the back, especially, and really just the body. Now, you know, I was mentioning it's this tubular shape, but the way the armor was drawn, it was so, like, form-fitting. You, you knew it was metallic, and you could tell that it wasn't a physical body for the most part, but the way it was drawn in this kind of simple shapes here, it, it really made it look a lot more human in some ways. And then part of that, too, is because it was kept so simple. And, you know, there's a lot to say about simplicity in these pieces, and it's not a bad thing either. Being simple is not necessarily a negative trait. 
I want to talk about the base right now a little bit, just because I'm really digging it the more I'm looking at it right now. The bases are always really, really cool that Diamond Select does. You've heard me go on and on about these, but this one is especially nice because right here you can see Ultron. Ultron's down there. He's just been beaten up. I personally really like all this kind of rubble look that you see with these diamond bases, and especially this series in particular that Nelson and John are doing right now where it is kind of this like cityscape that has been attacked by all sorts of evil monsters and evil villains and stuff. And yeah, like they're not, like I said, interlocking, but they do connect to tell a story. So if you are getting all these pieces together, there is one kind of cohesive story and that story would be a big freaking battle. But yeah, the base is so cool. Great detail, great color work. You know, there's just a lot going on. You can even see as, as we're passing by the rocks right now, different textures on them. It's not just like, you know, one texture. There's like some kind of deeper stuff going on over here the different colors, the different shading that we're getting in this piece as well. And of course those metallics that really help make it pop and add to the story of the piece itself. Plus, you know, we really shouldn't forget right in the back there is like this giant laser thing that's sticking out of the back. We'll see that more in the rotation, but yeah, no, these, these bases are gorgeous. Like I don't know how Diamond isn't just in the business of selling diorama pieces for action figures because they, they would sell, they would sell like crazy. And I know, especially like talking about the 112 scale, man, they could clean house. It'd, it'd be expensive, but they would look good. Let's talk a little bit about this pose now as well, because it's a really interesting pose here. You know, it, it does very much kind of emphasize that Romita Jr. line work that I'm talking about here. Cause you know, we're seeing all these kind of tubular shapes. Everything is very thick, very, uh, you know, I, I don't use the word li linear, but I guess it kind of is linear in some ways. Like the dynamism comes in this shape and really it's this angle. In fact, that we're looking at, you can kind of see it more so than I think anything else here. There's not really necessarily an X shape. I don't think that we're seeing this piece that I talk so much about in art. Uh, that's the thing you see in most art pieces. There's not really necessarily an X shape so much as there is a lot of tension in the way the pose is here. That kind of keeps you grounded, keeps you centralized at looking at this piece. So, you know, you can especially see it from this angle here. I don't quite think it's as, as structured. No, I think right here, this is the way it should be kind of displayed, but it does work really well this way too. But I think personally, if you had it like, you know, straight on like this, you kind of lose a lot of the strength of the piece. So this is definitely a piece that works this angle right here. I think that's like the perfect way to display this thing here. And you can see what I mean about this tension. You know, there's a lot of different things that are kind of keeping him in this one little box, if you will. Even this laser is kind of helping keep him right in this area here. So you kind of just like dart around into not necessarily an X shape, more of a diamond kind of square thing, keep your attention there. So yeah, really cool piece, really interesting way that how that they did this too. And really interesting how they kept this one all together. Now I also like the uh, anatomy of the piece too here. Again, it's very John Romita Jr. because sometimes he didn't necessarily follow all the rules of anatomy, but you could still get the idea of what was going on. You can get that expressive nature, that expressive quality of his work. Uh, really too, from this side, you can definitely get it there too. It looks really cool, right? So I like the pose, I like the musculature in this piece. You know, this isn't your typical, more modern Iron Man style where you've got a lot of different armored pieces all working together. Now, in this version of him, it's just basically big old honking gold pants and whatever the heck he's wearing. I never understood it, but I didn't care because I just always thought it looked so cool anyway. Now, also, I want to talk about that head a little bit more too, because I mentioned how I felt like it kind of reminded me of Mobius. And when I said that, it's really, again, this kind of same armor, the same kind of thing that Mobius did, John Romita Jr. did also with just how they treated it. But I really think this neck and the head, especially with these lines in that part too, that's really what kind of reminds me of the Mobius piece. And that's a great thing to be reminded of. Now let's talk about some of the uh, translucent pieces here. I think I'll start with what's at the end of this hand here, which is one of those blasts. And again, in that kind of John Romita Jr. style, where the blast is a lot linear, very simple shapes, but it tells you the story and it has that energy going into it. So that's really interesting to me. And I also really like the smoke coming out of this repulsor hand here. Now it's a little hard to tell what's actually happening with it because the smoke is not right on the repulsor beam. I don't know if it's meant to be on her, but no, it looks like it's pretty solid. So uh, it's like coming out of his fingers. So I don't know if it's at his fingers, just shot something out here. I don't want to say finger blast, but I just have. So I, I don't really know what's quite going on with that hand. I like the smoke effect and I'd say it kind of works really well with the overall story of the piece. It might just be that I don't necessarily like the effect itself, but yeah, overall, really cool piece. You know, I, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about this one because John Romita Jr. style is a little divisive at times and I wasn't quite sure how it would translate into statue form, but I think they've done a really great job on actually getting all these different pieces to work together. And for the most part too, I'd say the paint job is also very clean. That's a really important thing when you're having this style of artwork and this style of statue is you want that work to be clean. So yeah, the red metallics are very shiny. The gold metallics are very shiny. And the rubble is very more matte finish, so it contrasts all those elements really nicely together. Here's just a good look at the entire piece now as it rotates around. I really dig this one, you know, but you gotta keep in mind again, this isn't like what you're gonna get with the movie style Iron Man pieces, 
or the more modern style armors. This is that kind of late 80s, early 90s look for Iron Man, and it can be hit or miss depending on what you're into. For me, this is a big win because I like that style of Iron Man, and it reminds me so much of that Mobius and the John Romita Jr. work that, you know, this is a perfect piece for my shelf. It's really cool. I still like these energy blasts here and the smoke effect. You know, really looking at them isolated, maybe not so much, but together, they really do work. It's, it's really cool. Very interesting pose also. So hats off to the design team on this one. Looks really nice overall. And man, that base. I just need that base. It's all about the base, everybody. So that's our look at this Marvel Gallery PVC diorama of Iron Man. It's a real knockout winner for me. I think you're going to like it too, especially if you are an Iron Man fan. An Iron fan? I don't know what they call them. If you want to pick this up, we're going to have links to Amazon in our description below. So make sure you click on that link. It helps us out at no extra cost to you. This piece retails right now for about $50, but that price will usually fluctuate on Amazon, typically going a little bit under that. So definitely worth the price. So until next time, this has been Nerd News Today. I'm Matthew. Really enjoying this Iron Man piece. Highly recommend it. So go grab it if you can. We'll see you guys here next time with more statue reviews and everything else we do here on Nerd News Today.